My name is Danik Coffey, and I'm one of the elders here. Um, today, it's going to be a little different. Hopefully, that's okay with everyone. Um, I, I see myself as being a little different, so I figure that if I'm going to bring the word sometimes, then it's going to also be a little different. So, and that's good. That kind of is actually what I'm talking about today. So, um, but again, it is the Christmas season here, and we do celebrate Jesus' birth. Um, so I was going to ask the question, like, what is it that we think about whenever the Christmas season is here? Like, I know for me, I think about, like, one, like, if somebody was to ask me what I wanted for Christmas, what would I tell them? Because pretty much I really don't need anything. Anything that I'm, I want for myself, I'm going to go get it. So, um, so you don't have to give me a gift. I'm, I'm a pretty content person. Um, but then also, I guess the thing that I really think about is, like, what gifts do I want to give the people that I care about? And I have some friends helping me today. So let me adjust here. But what, what do I want to get the people that, um, that I care about? What kind of gift would I like to get them? And today, I don't really actually want to talk about tangible gifts like that. I want to talk about spiritual gifts um, and how gifts that God has given us look in relation to the church. You know what? It's really a blessing that we're moving because whenever we do this in the future, we have a way bigger stage to be able to do something like this. (laughs) Amen. Um, So the kind of like the cliche message at this time of the year would be like that Jesus is the reason for the season, that he's God's gift to us. Yes, amen, we believe that. Um, But really, what the Lord has for us to focus on in this season is exactly those spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us. So that is what I want to talk about today. Um, Because our initial moment of salvation is the most important thing, but it doesn't, our time with the Lord and our relationship with the Lord does not end in that moment. That's just like the start. And us growing in our relationship with the Lord and our understanding of Him and our understanding of ourselves and how He's created us and who He's called for us to be is kind of the rest of the journey. So we want to look at that today. So we are in a season of building for what God has promised us. And um, our heart is to see the Lord build our church, build his kingdom, build his church as a whole. And um, I want to go ahead and hop into the word real quick. So Josh, if you could pull up 1 Corinthians 12. If you were here, if you probably like six weeks ago now, you probably know that I actually used the same passage in my last message, but there's a lot here. So this is just where the Lord's had me. So Um, reading from the New New Living Translation today, and we'll start in 1 Corinthians 12. It says, now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments of supernatural energy, brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. You know that when you were heathen, You were led off after idols that could not speak habitually as impulse directed and whenever the occasion might rise. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking under the power and influence of the Holy Spirit of God ever can ever say, Jesus be cursed. And no one can really say, Jesus is my Lord, except under the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. Now, there are distinctive varieties and distributions of endowments, gifts, extraordinary powers, distinguishing certain Christians due to the power of divine grace operating in their souls by the Holy Spirit. And they vary, but the Holy Spirit remains the same. And there are distinctive varieties of service, ministration, but it's the same Lord who is served. And there are distinctive varieties of operation of working to accomplish things, but it's the same God who inspires and energizes them all in all. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the evidence, the spiritual illumination of the Spirit for good and profit. To one is given through the Holy Spirit the power to speak a message of wisdom, and to another the power to express a word of knowledge and understanding according to the same Holy Spirit. To another, wonder-working faith by the same Holy Spirit. To another, extraordinary powers of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophetic insight the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, to another, the ability to discern and discern and distinguish between the utterances of true spirits and false ones, to another, various kinds of unknown tongues, to another, the ability to interpret such tongues. 
All these gifts, achievements, abilities are inspired and brought to pass by one and the same Holy Spirit who apportions each person individually exactly as he chooses. For just as one body is a unity and yet has many parts, and all the parts, though many, form only one body, so it is with Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One. So that was a lot. And there's still a lot more there that I don't even have to, time to talk about today. Um, but Paul is, Paul is talking about those believers who have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Us as believers, those who have received Jesus as our Savior, who have the Holy Spirit, we have giftings that the Holy Spirit has given us that are in existence for the purpose of building the church, encouraging each other, um, really just kind of giving each other glimpses of God's heart um, and who he is. Um, and each one of us has different, a different gifting or many different giftings, and they're different from the other people. Um, one thing that I think that the culture has right today is that diversity is very important. Like, if diversity wasn't important to the Lord, then he would not have, he would have made us all the same color of skin, given us all the same color eyes and hair color. Like, if we look around the room, actually, our church is, is pretty diverse today. So we've got people with, a, some people with the same skin color, but they have a different pigmentation or tone of that skin color. We have different people, people with different eye colors, hair color, different uh, slanting positions of their eyes for us that are Asian in the room, very few of us, but... Um, but anyway, so lo- the Lord really celebrates and appreciates diversity. And so, you know, we hear a lot about that in the culture today, but, but I really think that's, that's, that's true. And the Lord is wanting to highlight that in this time of the world, that he has created each one of us unique. And there's something special about each one of us individually. Um, so I, I want to go down to, let's see, Josh, to verses 27 and 28 of the same passage. Um, Paul's still speaking here in 1 Corinthians 12. It says, Now you collectively are Christ's body, and individually you are members of it, each part severally and distinct, each with his own place and function. So God has appointed some of the church for his own use, first apostles, special messengers, second prophets, inspired teachers and expounders, third teachers, then wonder workers, and then those with the ability to heal the sick, helpers, administrators, speakers in different unknown tongues. Um, there are several passages that talk about spiritual gifts in the Bible. This is one of them, and this list is not comprehensive. Um, but I wanted to go through this passage today because I wanted everybody to see that the Lord has given lots of different giftings. Um, so if your gift is not on this list, don't feel bad. It's probably still in the Bible somewhere. It just may not be in this passage. Um, but again, it's the, it's the one Holy Spirit that distributes the gifts and all of these spiritual gifts are from him, and they're operated in through him, the same one Holy Spirit. Um, to demonstrate this, I have, I have a, I'm going to be pulling up a lot of people today. That's why there's three chairs behind me. I don't need three different chairs. But, um, to demonstrate this, I did want to pull up a couple of people, so Robbie and Stephen. If y'all could go ahead and come on up now. Yes. Okay, so this is going to be really hard for the ASL interpreters. So Stephen is profoundly deaf. He doesn't read lips. He doesn't talk. So his only form of communication is to sign. So Stephen, I'll have you stand on this side because they'll probably still be interpreting for Roberto. And Rob, you can be here. Yo, you, don't, you don't have to sit. Y'all can, y'all can stand. Okay, so I'm really looking forward to this larger stage. Um, so what I had asked for them to do today is to have a conversation. It's okay. I asked for them to have a conversation. So Robbie, how much, how much sign language do you know? He knows zero sign language. And Stephen knows English, but you can't talk, right? Can't speak. I can voice like maybe a little bit. Not really. Okay. So what I wanted to do to demonstrate kind of the giftings of the Holy Spirit and how vital each one of us is, is allow for them to have a conversation. Um, I've kind of given them the topic of what each one of them can talk about. And uh, they're going to talk to each other without an interpreter. Interpreter, go away. So 
why don't you go first, Robbie? So, what do you plan on doing for school? <laughs> okay. All right. So, how much did you understand of what he said? Uh, I saw a peace sign. Go he saw a peace sign. So, so how much how much did you understand what he was saying? Looks like he said like two sentences, but I can identify it. Okay. So now, interpreter, come on up here. And you can, y'all, I want y'all to have the same conversation again, but now we'll use an interpreter. Okay. So this is Carissa, Stephen's beautiful wife. Okay, so go ahead. What do you plan on doing for school? Yeah, I, um, you know, I don't, I'm not going to school right now this year. Maybe next year. I love my job right now, so that's what I'm doing. That's cool. Okay, your turn. I'm, you know, really looking forward to seeing you. The Lord has many opportunities. I feel like the Lord has given, he's going to give you a lot next year. And, you know, I'm, I can't see in depth what he's got for you, but I can see that there's many things he's got, you know, for your growth next year. And I see that. Praise God. Thank you. Okay. So now, how much did you understand with the interpreter? A lot. Cause like, percentage-wise. Percentage-wise? Like, if, I mean, I understood 100%. Because he understood 100%. Because it was interpreted. And how much did, did you understand from his conversation? Everything. Everything. Okay. Thank you, guys. Appreciate, appreciate your help today. Okay. So I wanted to use that as, as an example because this is a, a more practical skill of knowing another language and being able to interpret um, that language. But it's kind of the same for each one of us in the church. So the Lord's put... He's deposited within each one of us a gifting. And whenever we are not operating in our giftings, it's kind of like the conversation without an interpreter. So there's a lot lost in the lack of translation, actually, in that scenario. But there, there is a lot that's lost. And God, God is turn, turning the door for his church into a new season where it's time for each one of us to begin walking out in what God's called for us to do and how he's created us. Um, the last time that I gave the message, I talked about um, the importance of forgiveness and unity within the church. So the step past all of that is actually starting to find an appreciation for our differences. You know, sometimes whenever there are different giftings operating, you feel a rub or some friction because there's something different about somebody else that challenges who I am and Sometimes that stirs up some emotion. So there's lots of opportunities for us to continue walking in that um, place of seeking unity and forgiving each other. But one reason why I wanted to highlight this today is because the Lord had, just as I, as I continue to pray over our church and um, just listen to what the Lord says, he, he just keeps speaking the same word to my heart. And that word is that he's called for the refuge to be a church to the unchurched. And so he said, you know, there's a lot of churches that are for the churched. But he said, I want this house to be a church to the unchurched. So what does that mean? So, you know, for, for a church to be a church to the churched, it's going to be focused on ministering, ministering to people who maybe already know Jesus or they are familiar with, you know, the Lord from being in the church. But for being a church to the unchurched, the Lord's saying and calling for this, this house to be a church that seeks and saves the lost. So not only that, he also says that he's going to send the lost to us, people that have no point of reference for who Jesus is. They don't know what the church is supposed to be in its current state or what it's supposed to be actually. Um, so the Lord is wanting us to begin to learn how to identify what he's placed in us and start to walk it out because there's something in each one of us, again, like the example with Stephen and Robbie. Thanks again, guys. Um, there's something within each one of us that 
you know, Pastor Jason sitting here on the front row, his approach to like having a conversation with someone is entirely different than mine. He has a lot of different experiences than I have. And sometimes there, there may be the same person that comes up and may receive from one of us, but not the other. And that's just how the, how the Holy Spirit works sometimes through us. Um, so today I want to I wanna look at a few, I want to bring a, a couple of people up here with me today to kind of, um, to kind of demonstrate this further. Um, let's see. Lori, why don't, why don't I get you to come up here? So I've asked, yes, and if you want to grab one of those mics right there. So I've asked Lori Cleary to come up today as one of these people. She, you can sit wherever you like. So Lori is, is one of these people that, that has started, probably even before being here, already walking out and what God's called for her to do. And um, I wanted to highlight her because, again, it's, uh, it's important that we value each other as fellow Christians. And whenever we see somebody that's walking and operating and what God's called for them to do, we need, we need to cheer each other on. And so this is one of those opportunities that I felt like we were able to do that today and, um, and then also just kind of hear a little bit of her heart. So, Lori, thanks again for coming up here. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> um, so Lori is in our house. She's the one that oversees the host teams. And we've talked about this a little bit, um, not as much from this format. So today uh, we're going to talk about it a little more again. So can you tell us exactly... What are the host teams here in the refuge? So the host team, in our, we're wanting to host the Holy Spirit, and we want to host people. And, you know, that's God wants, a, that's what our, the Great Commission is, to love God and to love people. And what's happened in the body is we've had our, kind of our hands and feet haven't been operating the way they need to. And we've gotten fat and not, doing the things that God's called us to do. We just kind of sit back, entertain, and there's a, st you know, a stat that 20% um, of the people do 80% of the work in the churches. And so we're trying in the, um, the host team is really what we're called to do every day, not just at church, but um, you know, God has called us to love. He says that um, they'll know that we're disciples by our love for one another. So that's the start, is the love. And then if you look at the great co-mission, you know, the co-worker we're doing with God, um, what Jesus said was, go make disciples. Um, he's given us all authority to do that. And he says, the very last thing he says, lo, I'm with you always. And so that's what he's calling us to do in the host teams is to love the people and um, use our gifts. And that can look like very many different things. You know, it could be that you're praying with somebody. It could be that you're um, greeting somebody at the door. It could be that you're getting um, a cup of coffee or some water for somebody. Or, um, but the idea of just getting this place ready for our, our guests to come into our house, whether that's family that we maybe haven't seen for a couple of months, or maybe we see them every week. But we want to be welcoming to each other and take care of the house so that um, when we start worshiping and when we start doing the things that God's called us to do here, we're able to receive, receive those things. You know, um, Pastor Jason... He's been given all authority, and I've been given all authority. So what, what's the difference? You know, he's chosen to walk in that. And as he, you know, we think about spiritual, like, promotion, but it's really more about um, responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, God gives us more and more responsibility right. as we're faithful in those small things. And um, we need to not look at things as being small or trivial because mm -hmm. we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And the purpose of that Holy Spirit is to reconcile people to God. And that can look, you know, pastor could be doing it up here, 
I could be doing it just by saying hi to somebody and realizing that they're having a really hard time and sitting down and, and sharing with them maybe my own story or just saying a prayer. And so that's, that's what host teams looks like. Um, and everybody is welcome there. Not only mm. welcome, but it's really the great, great commission, you know, that we're supposed to be partnering with God right. in order to, he could have done it a lot of different ways, but for whatever reason, <laughs> he chose to use his people mm -hmm. to build his kingdom. Yeah, amen, amen. Well, I would ask her what excites her about this ministry, except I feel like she already answered that question. <laughs> she's very passionate about this. And, you know, what you should know about Lori is that she's even like, as she's taken on this role, she's begun to visit other, other houses and other bodies. And she just goes in and she asks the Lord, like, all right, Lord, show me something. Show me how that we can love people better in our house based upon my experience. And she has had some very interesting experiences and it's, it's taught her a lot. You know, not from a place of judgment, but she just wants to like know well, like how, when are we moving to our new building? Like, how can we really love people when they walk in the door? Because the promise from the Lord is that He's going to send people that don't know Him, and you know, just one very practical thing. Um, I don't know that we have a lot of men on the host team currently, but there's been several times where when I go into the men's restroom and there's no paper towels, or like we're running out of paper towels and there's no extra ones in there. And like, I think to myself, like, if I was a guest in someone's house and I went in there and there, were, there was no toilet paper or there's nothing to dry my hands with, it's almost like, did these people even like anticipate me coming? Did they care that I'm going to be here? Like, if there's no, if I search in the restroom and there's nothing that I need when I'm in there, you know, for me, that's my perspective. And, and whenever we have people that maybe don't know the Lord or don't know us or anything, like, it's... <laughs> If I think that way, it's very possible that other people could think that way too. So for me, I think, you know, even today in this house and once we move into our new space, it's very important that, that all of us as the refuge community, that we all take ownership of the space because very little things, Lori and I were talking about this today, very little things can be very big things. And we don't know, like, maybe maybe you're an introverted person who who being up on stage and talking about Jesus would, like, freak you out. And for me, I'm an introverted person, and sometimes it does freak me out. But, um, but maybe that's maybe that's how you how you love is just by serving people in a very practical way like that. Um, you know, it, it's really funny because I haven't told Danik this, but God kind of called me to take it one up on that visiting other places. Uh, Keta and I were at a restaurant yesterday morning, and I knew within I would say five seconds that the, the person coming up to our table was a really dynamic Christian, that she was full of God, and you could just feel the joy. And that's, you know, we, we can go visit places, but, you know, the Spirit of God in us does not change. Mm -hmm. And so even if we're, you know, if this is your first time here, if you have the Spirit of God in you, He's still calling you to that friendliness. He's still calling you to that um, being a light and, um, you know, the idea of I'm going to wait till somebody comes up or, um, you know, I'm a stranger here. It's nice as the body to do that, but I think God's called us um, wherever we are to, to be hosting him. You know, we, we have him inside of us and, you know, he sends us out into those places of work and into those places of pain so that we can bring his light there and that we can bring um, healing to those places in people's lives through introducing people to Jesus. Amen. Amen. So one important question that I would like you to answer today is what has God promised to you in relation to host teams here internally in the house? You know, I really see that it's a, uh, just a healing process that um, the body gets mobilized and that we don't see um, small things as being small things. It's like a paradigm shift and that um, I really see teams of people um, together. Like we meet, I call it our pregame pep talk. And so we meet uh, in the, in the uh, kitchen because 
the band's out here. Um, the worship team's out here. So we meet in the kitchen, and it's a small group, but we're talking about, hey, let's get ready for the game, you know, game on. And so we have a little bit of a talk about, you know, hosting his presence and um, just what that looks like just to get us ready. And so um, I see as we move over to the freeway, I see more people coming in mm -hmm. that, you know, there's a lot more visitors. So there's going to be a lot more people um, needed to, to be in the house while these other people are coming in. Amen. Amen. So how can the body partner with you and what God has placed on your heart here in relation to host teams? You know, I think the, the main thing is be present, show up, and God's going to use you. And it's what's right in front of you. You know, it's like I think I sat back and I was just like waiting for somebody to say, I actually, I mean, even with the host team, somebody had to say, okay, gun, you're off, go, you know, and I'm like, I was waiting for like somebody to say, go, you know, and um, God said, go, Jesus Amen. said, go, he said, Amen. go and make disciples. So um, there's somebody that's sitting right in front of you right now. And every day I call them divine appointments. And so for here, as far as the body, if you could come um, at 945 and meet with us for our pregame pre talk, that would be great. If not, as soon as you walk in that door, start hosting. You know, yeah, if you get amen. here, start hosting because, um, you know, we're, we're preparing the house. And even if you're, you know, a visitor or whatever, like if you go to the bathroom and there's water on the sink, wipe, you know, wipe it. It's just yeah, kind of yeah. normal. Um, it, it take, treat it like it's your, your, your home. And, um, I started doing, actually, there was a pastor of a really big church in town that talked to us about using the restrooms and wiping the counters. And I just thought it was so funny that he said that from the pulpit. But ever since then, I do not go into a public restroom anywhere. When I, you know, after I do my paper towel thing, I, you know, just out of consideration, I wipe the sink down for somebody else. So, you know, that sounds really small. But it's those things and, and being excellent in the small things. Um, one of our guys that gets here, he just notices, I, I don't notice it, but he always is sweeping out front before the guests are coming. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. you know, the thing I noticed, we had a big old ladder in the middle of the, the house one time when I got here. And I, I noticed that's, that. That's so I got the see. ladder taken care of. But anyway. Well, before she goes back down, I, I just want everybody to extend their hands over her. And I just want to pray a blessing over her, Lord. Thank you for today, God. Thank you for Lori. And thank you for her heart. I just thank you for her obedience to step out and, and for the heart and the vision that you've given her to minister to those that are in our house, for us to, as a body, love each other better, God, and for us to love those coming to our house, those that come into our house that don't know us, that don't know you, Lord. We just pray blessings over her and success, God, um, and everything that you've set in her heart to do with regards to this ministry and all the promises that you have given her, Lord. We just agree with those, Lord, and we thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So I am going to run short on time today, I have a feeling, but um, Josh, if you could go to Exodus 35. After the message, it would be great for you guys to go back and look at this, Exodus 35, 21 through uh, chapter 36, 7. Um, but... This is not the first time in history where the Lord has wanted to have his presence be amongst his people. Um, in the Old Testament, whenever the Israelites were wandering through the desert, originally the Lord was like leading them by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire at night. But then at some point he comes and he tells Moses, like, I want to... I want my presence to be in the midst of all of you. And so he tells Moses, like, he gives him all these instructions for how to build the tabernacle, which is probably kind of like the first church building potentially. And uh, like down to like the furnishings, exactly what everything should be made of, um, how the priest should dress and what, what that should look like. 
And um, Moses goes before, the, goes before the congregation of Israelites and he says, this is what this is supposed to look like. And so bring, if your heart is stirred, bring what you have that falls in line with this to us so we can begin the work. Um, of course, that did happen. Um, but I do want to look at a couple of verses, and I want to go to verse 30 of chapter 35. It says, And Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord is called by name Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God and with ability and wisdom and intelligence and understanding and with knowledge and all craftsmanship to devise artistic designs and work silver, gold, bronze, um, working gold, silver, and bronze, and cutting stones for setting and in carving of wood for work in every skilled craft. And God has put in Bezalel's heart that he may teach both he and Aholiab, son of Ahizamach, the tribe of of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with wisdom of heart and ability to do all manner of craftsmanship of the engraver, the skillful workman, the embroiderer in blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen and weaver, even those who do or design any skilled work. And the, these passages are talking about all different people that had, For it talks about women who had the skill of like sewing and putting together fabrics, just kind of like highlighting like the Lord has given each of us something to give for the hosting of his presence. And that's, that's what we're about here. Um, another interesting thing from this passage that I just want to highlight before we go to the next thing was that this is saying that the spirit of God was put in this man in the Old Testament. We don't see that happen very often, but obviously in the New Testament days, the spirit of God is put in all of us believers. Um, I do want to go ahead and just for the sake of time, Keep moving. So let me bring up um, Carter and Michael from the Alvin Skate Crew. Oh, Michael is not here at the moment, so we'll grab him whenever he comes. Michael's in the restroom, so we can talk oh, about no. him right now. <laughs> Poor Michael. Poor Michael. Not fun to be called out. So I was going to ask him, what is, oh, I guess I'll introduce you a little bit. So, so Michael Gunling, he's actually our, our student pastor here at the refuge. Um, but prior to him even being in full-time ministry, he was already walking out in his own ministry, in which is highly evangelistic. Um, since Michael's not here at the moment, would you like to talk about what Alvin Skate Crew is? Yeah, so Alvin Skate Crew uh, is an organization that works over there in Alvin with the, with the skaters in the skate park. Many of y'all were probably at the skate event uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, amazing time where the Holy Spirit came. But uh, this is just so good what Danik is talking about because that whole thing was birthed. Um, I, I believe that these things are just birthed as an overflow of your intimacy with the Lord. Right. And there, it's, a, it's a result of like your time with him in a quiet place. And it just comes out all mm -hmm. by itself yeah. because these giftings are intertwined with your passions yeah. because the father is a good father and he yeah, knows yeah. you. Like Amen. he knows how he made you and he's not going to make an introverted person go be the speaker. Yay, Michael. He might. He right. might. <laughs> Sorry, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, worship, right? so he's going to, he's going to intertwine those giftings with your passion. Yeah. Amen. So, you know, we, we, I, I remember sitting down and watching like people do stuff and being like, I could never do that. I could never be that guy. And that's okay. Like, it's really okay. He put this passion in my heart. I remember going in, I remember he called me into time of like the secret place with him just to hang out in the quiet, in the dark and pray. And uh, he just created this passion in my heart to see people healed, to see demons come out, to see people baptized, to see revival just hit the streets. Amen. And, and then like, he, but he did that with my passions too. And I'm, you know, I'm police. So like, it's just, <laughs> it just goes hand in hand with like what, how he made me already to be. So Amen. Alvin Skate Crew happened months before Alvin Skate Crew happened. I was on I was driving around Alvin just praying for the city, praying for people on the street, 
And then God just brought Michael you know, into my life. He'd been praying on his own and then he brought us together. And then that's, that's kind of how that all culminated. Amen. So what, um, what has God promised you for Alvin's Gate Crew, Michael? <clears throat> um, for me, it's simple that we'll see community transformation. I'm not one that's just okay with a little bit of change. I want transformation. It's one of the things we stand for here at The Refuge. And I believe that God doesn't just transform people. He transforms communities as well. And so that's what he's promised us through what we're doing. Amen. And so everybody is pretty familiar with your ministry because we, as a church, we did support an evangelistic, an evangelistic outreach in Alvin about a month ago now, I guess. So what, what has the response been of those skaters since that, that event? Michael? Yeah, um, it's been pretty interesting. Uh, they, we have begun doing some different um, purposeful evangelistic things. So I've been meeting with them every Sunday afternoon and just straight up telling them about Jesus, whether they want to hear about it or not. And uh, we've seen a higher level of interest. We've seen um, there were many decisions for salvation and rededication. So there's a young man that I'm working with right now uh, at the League City Skate Park, actually, that rededicated his life to Jesus. So he's just letting me hang out with him and talk to him about the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've just seen a lot of a lot of growth. Well, and, and may, some of y'all may not have heard the story, but tell them the story the like the week after you went to Grace. And which the one there's that, a lot of story. Which no, one? no, the one where you invited everybody to come and hang out. And, oh yeah, and so, nobody showed up. <laughs> right. Well, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so a couple weeks later, we did this. Uh, meet up at Grace Pizza, and I was just going to tell them, hey, look, this is what we're going to begin to do. We're going to begin to be more intentional about sharing with you about the love of God that we carry with us, the reason we've been out here every week. So I set this whole thing up, and I'm standing out there with, uh, with the owner, uh, VJ, and my friend Eddie back there, and we're just chilling, and we're looking over at the skate park, and it's Sunday afternoon, mid evening and there's just not a whole lot there's a lot of skaters over there and I'm like that's weird it's Sunday what are all those skaters doing here and it got to be about time for them to come over and they didn't and so I'm I looked to Eddie and I said man I guess we got to go over there because they're not coming over here and no longer had that word come out of my mouth they started walking from the skate park through the parking lot into the pizza place and we had this whole setup and we had like 21 of them Mm. that came over and hung out with us and we fed them and loved them and told them, look, here's what we're getting to do, going to do. We're going to tell you about Jesus. If you don't believe in him or if you do, it doesn't matter. We're going to tell you because we want you to know there's something greater in this life than what, uh, than what you may understand right now. And so it's pretty crazy. It's pretty wild. Amen. So can you see a lasting work in all those 21 skaters by yourself? Or do you need other people to come and walk alongside you to be able to minister and love beside you? Yeah, 100%. I can't do it by myself. Carter, the two of us, we can't do this by ourselves. We do need people. We need people who have faith. Mm-hmm. You know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. We've been sitting here doing this for a year. We haven't necessarily seen all the things we want to see, but just because you cannot see it doesn't mean the Lord isn't working in the midst of it. Right. And so uh, we need people who are of faith. We need people who are evangelistic. We need people who want to tell people and have a heart to tell people about the love of Jesus. And actually, as uh, Lori shared, it's really everyone's mandate to share the love. It's not a suggestion that right. Jesus gave to us. It's a commandment that he gave to us to go and to make disciples of all nations. That's right. But all nations, for us, a lot of times in America, we think we have to go and visit Ephraim over in India. But realistically, guys, all nations is walking across the street. It's true. And so we've got to, as a community and as a people, become a person who cares about our neighbor as much as we care about the person on the other side of the ocean. Yeah. And so that would be yeah. another way. And then honestly, financially, it's a huge way to support what we do um, and, and what's going on, things from providing pizza to providing uh, plates and napkins and cups for things that we do to sometimes we have smaller scale events out there where we need the Lord to provide in order to make that happen. And uh, everything we do is evangelistic. It's not a, we're just doing this to have fun. Everything we do 
has the gospel and Jesus at the center of it. So th those are ways that you can get involved in how we would like for you to get involved. Um, we meet Sunday afternoons about 4, 4.30. It's not every week as it was before, and we'll take a break here during the holidays. But um, we'll be getting rolling again after today in January. But we'd love, if that's something that you're passionate about, we'd love to, Kari and I would love to serve with you. Amen. Amen. Well, while I did have Carter up here, I did want to highlight him. Um, outside of the Alvin Skate crew, like Carter operates very evangelistically just in his everyday life, even outside of walking alongside um, Michael here. And I just wanted to point him out because he always has, has some sort of cool story that like stirs you to like a holy jealousy. You know, like he'll tell you like, this is what the Lord did today. And I'm like, man, like... I work at home, like I don't get to see all this fun stuff, but he was telling me this one story and I thought, I thought this would really minister to you guys, but um, so he was saying he is a police officer of sorts, so do you mind telling him about that story about the guy you pulled over the one time and the word of knowledge that you gave? No, not him. It's the story. The, the, the guy that I called. pulled over Michael uh, too one time. Well, <laughs> that, that's not part of the script. I'm kidding. Um, no, I remember there was a guy that you pulled over and um, he called the county and he wanted to tell them about his experience of being pulled over. You gave him a word of knowledge about uh, playing the guitar or something like that. Oh, oh, man. God is so good, guys. He has so many. He is like, this is he, a great is, example. he hammers he so away stories. at you as much. Like we have as much of God in our lives as we want to have, right? Amen. And so, as, a, as and I'll be honest, guys, I, I shut down on God sometimes. Like, nope, not doing that. You know, <laughs> it is it is 8 p.m. I want to watch The Office, and I don't want to be bothered <laughs> by anything else right now. Oh so gosh. I do that. All right. The but, turntables. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But Turn. uh, how the turntables? But yeah, God does just do really cool. Um, really cool uh, downloads on, on stuff like that. So yeah, that, that particular time, this happens quite a bit, praise the Lord. But I, was, I, I found this guy and uh, I, I caught him doing quite a few bad things at the time. And, um, and I always, whenever I get there, I always ask Holy Spirit what he wants me to do. And sometimes he tells me to do the thing I don't wanna do. And he does that actually more often than what I wanna do. <laughs> But this particular time, uh, this guy was, had messed up quite a bit and was setting himself up for quite a few uh, fines. But I just heard Holy Spirit um, talk to me about this guy and say, that, hey man, this guy uh, plays the guitar and he's got a heart for worship. And that's what, that's what he needs to know. And um, so that was, so I remember coming up to him and he, he's like bracing himself, you know, just to get like, hammered with these tickets, and I'm like, hey, man, just want you to know, like, the Lord loves you, and uh, you play guitar, don't you? And he goes, how did you know that? And I was like, well, he's calling you into worship again. Like, that's what he wants you to do. And I think he called the judge, and he started to cry <laughs> or something like that because the judge called me and said, what are you doing to these people, man? Um, but, yeah, God just, God just moves and speaks like that. And uh, it comes out of like your heart for in your passion for just your, your secret time. That's just my thing, guys. That's what I preach about. It comes into your intimacy with the Lord. And you can have your passion, you know, to be, to do be evangelistic. And some people don't like that though. Like, you know, that's really cringy sometimes for people. And like, I'm a dad, so I don't care about being cringy. You know, it's okay. <laughs> But some folks don't like it, and, and that's okay. If you have a passion, I know some people, they're like, man, I don't have a passion for, like, you know, evangelizing or healing or doing any of these, like, any crazy, like, Todd White stuff, you know, but I just love hanging out, man. I just love hanging out. Dude, that's a gift because <laughs> there are some people that hate hanging out. Like, that's I true. hate just to hang out. I'll be, no offense, but I just don't <laughs> like to do it. And so we've got kids, though, at this skate park that need people that are just passionate about yeah. hanging uh -huh. out right. and just being like a pos – they have zero positive influences in their mm -hmm. life, and they're addicted to yeah. half a dozen different things, and the demonic is just having a field day with them, and they don't have any positive you know, influences. So if just you're just passionate about hanging out 
there is a place in the body, you know, for that. And there's a place here for that too, you know, if that's something the Lord's moving on you with. But. Amen. Thank you. One last question. Are you guys normal? Like, is this, what, is this how God, like, should Michael's be operating not. through? <laughs> is this how God should be operating through all of us? Though? I am. <laughs> um, this, I mean, I just look at it like this. Jesus came down into earth and he inhabited. Uh, when Jesus came, we made him our Lord and Savior. He took our natural and he brought the super and created the supernatural reality. And so the supernatural is a normal way of living and breathing in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. It's not a, oh, you're weird because you're acting like you hear from God. No, that's normal to hear from God. Right. Oh, you're weird because you're, you're telling these dudes that you don't know that are running around on skateboards that God loves them and has a plan for their life. No, 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 that's normal. Yeah. We want to become a super normal culture, not a super awkward, politically correct culture. Yes. So I personally believe that we are normal because we're acting from the citizenship, from the city where we belong, which is heaven. That's right. And so yeah. for you, I encourage you, we've got to move past this. Oh, this is awkward. This is this. No, the father invites you as his sons and as his daughter to, to drink the cup and to consume all that you can consume of him, it's freely given to you. And so, yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not unnormal. We're normal, but we're supernatural beings. And he's giving that not just to us on the stage, the evangelist, whatever the other gifts are, all of the gifts are supernatural. That's They're right. all supernatural. So I encourage you. Uh, those are a question. Be like, man, I don't know if I want to do that. That's okay. There's a gifting inside of you that is supernatural That's right. for you Amen. to use. Amen. So use it. Amen. Well, just again, let, uh, yeah, certainly. It's okay. You can sure. clap. It's okay. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, I want to do the same thing. And I want y'all just to extend your hands over these two men. And we just want to bless them. Father God, thank you for Michael and Carter. And thank you for their heart to see people come to know you and just to walk out and to, to see your kingdom further. God, we just pray blessings over them. And we, we speak your favor over the Alvin Skate crew, over the skaters there and over that ministry, God. We ask that every petition and request and, and heart's desire be, be granted and manifested, God, to see even more come to know you, Lord. We just thank you for their life and their obedience. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. And uh, one other person I wanted to bring up today, and I know I'm running a little short on time, but this uh, is somebody I really did want to come and chat with, because actually I don't know some of the answers to the questions that I'm going to be asking, so I'll be kind of sitting on the edge of my seat myself. But this is uh, Cecilia Armstrong, and Cecilia, Cecilia is the ministry leader over Providence Outreach Ministries, and... Um, We'll let you go ahead and talk about that. What is, what is POM? POM. POM is not plenty of marijuana, right, Carter? <laughs> that is not what I expected to say. <laughs> he asked me that one day, and I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Providence Outreach Ministries is an outreach ministry that we go into the strip clubs and into the massage parlors that I have proven that there's prostitution going on. In addition to raising awareness into our communities, I've done speeches at many churches or presentations at the Republican and Democratic uh, meetings, various places, wherever God tells us to go, that's where we'll go. Amen. Amen. And what, what led you into a ministry to people that were in brothels and strip clubs? Well, first of all, it kind of comes out of my abuse and my mm -hmm. hurt. And I got saved when I was 21, and before that, I always said I was looking for love in all the wrong places. Mm. And I have been, you know, I have my own story. And um, I always, always, since I got um, saved, I always felt that um, children and women are part of the ministry. Mm. And I did prison ministry for many, many years, and I met a couple of girls that was trafficked in the prison. And one of the girls had a barcode um, tattooed on the back of her neck from mm. her trafficker. Mm. 
And then I moved to Texas and I started getting, people just started saying, hey, you need to check this out, you need to check this out. And I'm like, no, I'm good. I don't need this. But I ended up being in a prayer meeting about human trafficking. And then God just started talking to me and I started doing volunteering with several of the community uh, organizations downtown. And then what I was learning from them, I'm here in our area and I'm like, this is happening here. And a lot of people don't know it. They're not aware it's happening here. And in praying about the name Providence, we just, it just kept coming up, coming up, coming up. And you know, the word Providence means God sees and he knows. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how we all started. And we are seven years old. It was, we were Amen. seven years old in October. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's worth clapping. So what, what has God promised for your ministry? So when you, when you began this ministry, I'm sure God told you something. So what was, what was his promise? What was his word to you? There's many promises that I'm believing for. Amen. Actually, one of them was I'll be speaking before governments about this kind of stuff. Amen. And um, I can't say I've spoken in government leaders, but I mean, there are leaders that I've spoken before. But not only that, there'll be multitudes of women, and not children. I mean, because when you reach out to the woman, if she has children, you're affecting the children too. Right, right. And then um, multiple houses, not just one house, but multiple houses where they can come and be reconciled and restored back to Mm -hmm. God. And be in that, di- you know, that divine destiny, that identity that God has created them to be in. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. So what, uh, has, there, has there been any fruit from Providence? Has, has anybody come to know the Lord through oh, your ministry? There's so much. There's so much. Oh, I, can't, I can't say, like... In the spas, you know, and because we go, most of the ladies in our spas are from China. Mm-hmm. They speak very little English or no English at all. And one of my giftings is the word of knowledge. Amen. And there's been quite a few times where God will say, ask her about this. Mm-hmm. And I ask and we pray and her eyes gets real big because she's been healed. Or um, like Sheree and I was in a spa one day and we've been going to this spa for a couple of years We've never gotten past the threshold. And one thing I, I try to do is put my foot across that threshold because once I get across that pre- threshold, I can say I take authority over that. Yeah, amen. And um, so after four or five years, we get across the threshold. The girl invites us in and we sit down. And as we're talking to her, she just starts crying. And it's like, what's going on here? So she shares that. She's from China. When she was eight months pregnant, the Chinese government took her baby. Mm. They aborted her baby. And they're very, very evil. Well, God says, you know, as we're praying, we prayed about it. And as we're talking to her, God says, why don't you ask her if he wants to meet me? And she accepted Christ right there. Amen. Amen. But that's, you know, that's not the only testimony because um, you've seen it in the girls that I brought here. Mm-hmm. Raquel is a testimony. Mercedes is a testimony. I remember the first time that I met Mercedes in the strip club. She's six months pregnant with her first baby. Mm, mm. And I can say it's not, God doesn't just use me. I have a team of people. Amen. You know, it's just not me. And through life, you know, people, God has brought people to Mercedes to help her come through what she's going through. So now you all in praying for POM, you're affecting her children. Amen. We're ministering to her children. Amen. She's telling me the testimonies that keeps coming by. God is Amen. faithful. Amen. Amen. You know, Amen. believe for her husband. He's going to be sitting next to her. Believe Amen. for her husband. Amen. Amen. So in that, you know, you have to have, you have to be, you know, like a spirit of evangelism. Mm-hmm. You have to be mission minded because God says, go out into the highways and byways and compel my people to come in. That's right. We're compelling people to come in. We're doing the unchurch because we take church into the strip clubs. Very we take church into the spas. <laughs> and one of our strip clubs, the girl says, they ask us to pray. We get in a circle and pray mm. every single time. Mm. Amen. Right there in the strip club. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I'll ask you the same question that I asked Michael and Carter. Are you normal? No, I'm not normal. 
I am not normal when it comes to the natural world. I am not normal. You know, God says we are a particular kind of people. So when you look at the worldly stuff or the world looks at you, are you serious? You're going into that? Mm -hmm. Are you doing that? You're saying that? You're praying Mm -hmm. that? You believe that? No, I'm not normal. Mm -hmm. But when you, as Michael said, when you look at the supernatural, you look at the God thing, I am very normal. That's right. You know, I, and we're doing, not just me, because I, I have a team, like I said. Amen. But no, I'm not normal. I want to see women freed. Actually, I want to see men freed, too, because yeah. without the demand, we don't need the women. Right. You know, we don't need the prostitution. We Correct. don't have to have it. Correct. So, no. Uh-uh. But you, like, work a job. Like, this is, this is your, your passion. This is your heart. But you, yes. but you I also, have a full-time you job. You have to work. You have yes. To, and they, you, you know, we, I've had... Prayed with many a girls and on my job too Amen. that come to know Christ. Amen. And you know, one thing that I like to do, whether I'm in doing ministry or whether I am out and about my way, I like to look at someone and say, "Can I have a Can I have a minute?" Sure. If God could do one thing for you today, what would it be? Everybody's got a one thing. That's good. Two weeks in Cracker Barrel. I'm talking to my server. Noah is his name. Can I have a minute? if you want God to do one thing, what would it be? And his request was, pray that my girlfriend and I can get our apartment together. One of the people I was sitting beside says, really, you're going to pray that him and his girlfriend can move in together? I'm going to pray that God will make a way, and he'll hear God in this. I'm not going to judge him. That's good. And, you know, the, yes, he accepted the prayer. Amen. So it's like, I play, we plant a seed. That's All you good. have to do is just plant the seed. Amen. And God will do the rest. Amen. Amen. So how, how can the body of Christ partner with you? I say we need the three T's. We need your time, your talent, and your treasures. Time, we need help. We need help going into the strip clubs because there's so many more. These girls will never come out of there. Many of them doesn't want to go to church because they've been judged. They've been there, done that. Mm-hmm. They judge me. They look at me. They do this. They do mm-hmm. that. And the same with the spas. Every time I drive up and down, I just found two more spas in Bay Area the other day. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This mm-hmm. is crazy. So we need your time, your talents. If you can't give me your time, you know, like the ladies that recently come together and made all these gift bags. Y'all, you just don't know. These girls are like, I'm getting Christmas in November you did an awesome thing there. They mm. felt your love and your prayers in them Amen. bags. Amen. And then we need your treasures. We are believing for a house. Amen. And I've actually, um, I. Um, it's kind of possibly in the works. Right? It is. <laughs> Her first house. It is in the works. I met a lady a long t- couple of years ago, and you know, I always say there's divine connections. Mm-hmm. You just don't always know what the connection is. Right. And we recently talked, and she says, we can do this. And I can see it happening by next year. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, am I ready for this? I I think your team will need to be larger whenever that occurs, though, because your team of Absolutely, yes, we will need help. So, you know, we're, um, I try, I'm a very, try to be a very good steward of the money that comes in. We need the money to help, because I don't know what it's going to cost us to get in this house. And then you'll have to have a house mom. You'll have to have, you know, someone there. To help these girls, discipleship, mentorship. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some of them don't know how to raise their children. They don't know how to budget. They don't know right. all this stuff. So this is what Very we're going to need. Very exactly. practical. Yes. Just how to live. Right. Mm-hmm. So one, one last question. And obviously, you know, for the people that you're ministering to, generally they're, they're women and they have a lot of hurt from men. Is there a place in your ministry for men to serve and to, to love? There is. And right now the need is we need someone, a man, to go with us when we do our outreaches. And, um, you know, there's just something about a man being in the car, praying, being secure, being protected. Just There's just something about that. Mm-hmm. And we haven't had that in quite a few years. When I first started, we had a man that would drive the car. And it was just awesome to know that he's out there. He's watching for us. He's got mm-hmm. our back. Amen. Eventually, of course, when we get our house, we will need maintenance. We will need landscaping. Um, 
all that kind of stuff. And then eventually I would like to say yes because a lot of the women, including myself, they don't know the true love of a man. Like when I was growing up, my dad was there, but he was not a nice man. Mm. So they need to know what true love, not only from the father, but what a man, what it kind of not like looks like into me, but what it looks like, like a man, Danik, you're a man of God. You can look at you and say, you're, you're a man of God. You kind of show this. You can, this is what we will need. Mm. Yes. Mm. That's good. Amen. Well, let's just pray. <laughs> I'm, I'm way past time. I apologize, everyone, but. It's good. It's been good, good today. I, it's, it's good for everyone to hear. Hear what the Lord is doing and also see the opportunities where you can partner with what the Lord's already doing. Um, but I do want everybody to do the same thing with Cecilia today, and we want to just pray over Providence Out Outreach Ministries today. Um, just blessings, Lord. Mm. Mm. So, Lord, we thank you for Cecilia. We thank you for Cherie and others that have partnered on her team, God, just to, to love people that are in the places where, where people don't want to go, Lord. Not, not your people. Mm. So, Lord, as you, as you say in Matthew 9, Lord, uh, to pray um, to the Lord of the harvest, to send harvesters into the field, God, I just pray that over Cecilia's ministry, Lord. I ask that you'd send more people, God. I ask that you send... Um, younger people as well to partner with her, God, to love and to, to minister and to see even more people come to know you, Lord, in, in her ministry, God, in the, in the strip clubs and in the brothels, Lord. Mm. We just speak your favor over the situation with the possibility of getting a house, Lord. You've promised houses to her, God, to see um, women and, and their children rehabilitated and to... Um, God, the, the life that you've called them to, to live, God. So we agree for that, God. We ask for a miraculous provision, Lord. And every need that, that, that comes, God, we just agree for that to be manifested and to be provided for by you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I add Thank one you. thing? Sure. Because you're talking about men, right? Mercedes has a husband. And you know, as men, I would like for you all to, to commit to praying for her husband. Yeah. You know, he needs to come into the body of Christ. He needs to know that men love him and care for him regardless of what his past is. Amen. Y'all can pray him. Y'all can pray amen. So as men, that's what I'm asking you to do is be amen. praying for her husband and anybody else in our ministry that has a husband that's not in church. Amen. Well, let's just agree right now for, for her husband. So, Lord, we just lift up Mercedes' husband to you, God. We ask that you would encounter him, God, in dreams, visions, God, that that you would speak to him directly, Lord. And as, as well as, God, that your body, your church, God, would begin, those people that are around him that do know you, Lord, that they begin to speak into his life, God, that you would put it on their heart to, to reveal your nature and your character and your love to him, God. Um, it's your kindness that leads anyone to repentance, Lord. So we ask, we ask, Lord, for a revelation of your kindness to Mercedes' husband, God. And we just believe for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so today, again, I apologize for running long, but, um, today I just want to leave y'all with some questions. Um, what is the gift that God has placed inside of you? And what has God called for you to do in your own life? Um, certainly, you know, these that are here, you can partner with them. You can, um, there's plenty of opportunities even in our house to be able to serve and to love. But what, what has God placed in you? And if that's something that you don't know, then let's begin to pray and ask God to reveal that to you. Um, but then also today, um, just kind of as a call to response, I've asked those that have shared today if they would come and that they would, that they would minister um, today. Anybody that needs healing, um, anybody that going back to what it said in Exodus 35 and 36, anybody who's, whose heart is stirred today, um, if your heart was stirred whenever you heard one of these individuals praying, then maybe the Lord wants to deposit something in you through the laying on of their hands. And 
you know, we have a lot of evangelists that were here today, you know, a lot of people that are literally going out and, and ministering to people that don't know him, that don't know Jesus. So I want to invite um, Lori and Carter and Cecilia, and I think Michael has to play behind me, but I want to invite them up and then the elders that are in the house, if y'all just want to partner with them. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a an activation of our giftings that are inside us that the Lord wants to happen. And sometimes in doing so, it just requires a step of obedience and, and a stepping out. Um, and these, that's what all of these have done and, and with regards to their giftings and um, the passions that the Lord has set within them.